What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here at Data Dash and today is May 31st of 2018. Well folks, it's time for a daily update here on the Data Dash channel and today we have a wide range of topics to discuss on the daily update. First and foremost, as always though, we're going to be spending some time looking at market valuations as well as doing some technical analysis on the market leaders. But outside of this as well, we have a lot of different headlines to talk about. Some positive developments in regards to the project that I'm working with, Unibright, with its recent successful hackathon. So we'll be looking into some of the exciting details in regards to that. Outside of that though, Oyster has launched its mainnet, Oyster Pro, which we've talked about for a long Long time on the channel has finally gone live and we'll talk about some of the interesting details with the launch outside of that as well in regards to some developments there was a recent hack on two big Canadian banks and the hackers are setting up a ransom of a million dollars we'll talk about what currency they selected and why it's quite ironic outside of that as well US investors are looking towards a newly launched ICO that's gonna be coming soon through the company monster which founded beats headphones we'll talk about how much they're trying to raise later on in the video and how ridiculous it is. And last but not least, some positive news in regards to Bittrex with opening up its US dollar pairing. So tons of things to talk about, guys. This isn't even everything that's happened in the crypto space, but we got to go through some of this. Let's dive into the daily update and spend some time talking about markets. Well, it's the third consecutive day now where we've had some positive price action. We haven't seen any sell side action at the moment. As we take a look across the board here over the past 24 hours, markets are generally in the green with a few players in the red at the bottom. For the most part though, we have definitely been holding back up and still holding around that $30 billion gain we got from the lows. So as we take a look over here, we can see here on the year that we're starting to hold here, starting to curb back up, possibly looking to hold above the lows we saw back in April. That would be very nice, very healthy to show that this wasn't an entire correction, that we aren't going to go straight, uh, straight back down to the lows. However, right now, we just aren't seeing any steady volume coming into the market, guys. It still seems like we're in this uh, manipulative period. Many people have been referring to it as uh, the uh, Bart's on the chart, or like uh, Bart from The Simpsons, his hair, how it's all spiked up. Many people have been referring to Bitcoin's price action is that it's, it's quite funny but it's the truth of the uh, the current matter the thing is i don't want to get too bullish in regards to the recent price action guys even though i'm trading a little bit even though i'm getting you know some some low altcoin positions at the moment i'm stacking up for some long-term positions at the same time i understand we still might have uh, you know a few more days or a few more weeks before we really start to see some major upside we need that liquidity in the market so and keeping a neutral mindset here at the moment. But as we can see here, as we take a look at market dominance, I'll go ahead, draw my chart down a little bit here. We can see that we have yet to get past 40%, which is making me think that Bitcoin's bottom is getting very near. Again, we might have another few days of correction, like I've stated, guys, but we're getting towards the lows of this. Don't get fearful when all the other institutions are getting greedy. They're getting greedy at these lows. They're starting to uh, get ready. Now, what I mean by institutions, I think someone asked that uh, a few days ago. What do I mean by institutions. Now, in the sense of institutions, when I talk about, say, the ETF for Bitcoin, that's banks. That's the actual financial institutions. When I call, when I say institutions, it's kind of a bad habit of mine. Uh, it's generally going off of my traditional thought of the big investors, the whales, uh, the larger investors, the hedge funds. Everyone's picking up on the lows if you have the big money, because that's where they have to buy in to make return. They can't buy in at highs when things are obviously going to probably drop. You buy low, you sell high. That's the general concept here, folks. So we have to keep in mind that we're getting Getting towards the lows here, in my opinion, and along with that as well, how all other coins as well as Ethereum are holding quite well, even after this corrective period in the sense of market dominance, they're still holding a lot of their gains. So I think that's important to note. However, let's go ahead and take a look across the board in the market. Today, I'm going to be spending some time as well. One thing I forgot to mention is that I did a recent trade, which I'll share with you all after we run through our market leaders here. So in regards to Bitcoin, still no serious liquidity, but it's nice to see some positive price action at the moment. We're still trucking along as we take a look here to the hourly. We're we're above the 200 hour, which is a good sign. However, we're still having the same pattern of, you know, 6,000 Bitcoin sell offs, 6,000 Bitcoin buy ins. I mean, it's just absolutely ridiculous. You can tell there's a lot of manipulation going on, guys. There's not much volume in the market. And until we get that, we're not going to get a real steady uptick, in my opinion, unless the whales want to manipulate it to the upside. So anyways, I think the next big level we have to test here, guys, is up to 8,000. But at the moment, many people are still still questioning are we going to see the bottom come in on the sixth of the sixth we'll have to see again as we've been talking about in the channel that's been a trend we've been seeing for the past few months that on the sixth of every month we tend to see the bottom or the top come in for bitcoin 
I don't know if that's the case, guys. Again, correlation isn't always causation. I do, however, like to see that this is holding above. Uh, not only 7,500, we were holding here well on the hourly, which was resistance over here, but along with that as well, that we're above the 200 hour moving average. So really good to see in regards to that. We'll go ahead and see what we can see here in regards to the 50 hour and the 21 hour curving up here. We're not seeing any downside direction. It looks like the dramatic end of the sell-off is over. The momentum indicators are showing that we're looking for some more upside. So I think the next big level we could test is 8,000, giving us some good room over the next day or so to possibly test towards that level and get some more upside action in markets. All right, let's go ahead here and take a look at Ethereum. Go ahead and take a look at Ethereum here on Bittrex. We can see it's holding nicely on the 50-day moving average. For me, what the thing the thing I'm going to look for here is obviously we have ES mainnet coming, guys. I think we're going to see if we can get above the 21-day moving average in this sense, which is the white line here represented on the chart. If we can get above there, I think the FUD uh, for Ethereum, many people think that e uh, EOS is going to sell a lot of their Ethereum during the launch. I don't think Dan Lambert and them are going to do that. But, you know, again, everyone's got different opinions. Could be a nice strategic move. Uh, but in this sense, I think you're going to see uh, Ethereum continue to hold here and possibly bounce back up and uh, hopefully engulf on the recent close uh, that we got for Ethereum here on the 28th, where we had a pretty big downside a sense of price action for Ethereum. Again, I pick up on corrections, guys. This has had a nice steady uptrend compared to most altcoins and has held a lot of its gains, especially for a market leader. Very, very nice price action. All right, XRP BTC. Let's go ahead and take a look at this here on Bitrix. XRP BTC, Ripple holding here still in the same sideways price range right now. I have a feeling that as much as this is below the 200-day moving average, if we got a pop-up above it and we could get above the 50-day moving average, I would turn bullish on this, at least for a trading opportunity. But at the moment, I'm not touching it. I'm not exactly bearish. I don't like it below the 200-day moving average. Again, with Ripple, the moving averages matter, guys. It is one of the market leaders we see time and time again that if this cannot hold above the 200-day after it's dipped below it, uh, we're going to get probably a much longer continued correction with Ripple. Going on here to take a look at Bitcoin Cash. Bitcoin Cash right now, well below the 200 days, it starts to curve back down again. I think you're going to see this come back down. I have no reason to believe that this should be seeing any serious gains. A lot of the news that was propping it up really wasn't that fundamentally beneficial for Bitcoin Cash at the moment. We're not seeing a high transaction throughput. Along with this as well with EOS. Now, as you all know, I had uh, recently picked up a position on EOS, and I still think it's going to do well into mainnet launch. However, at the moment, you know, we are tethering right now not only on the 21-day moving average, but we're looking to see if we can hold on the 50-day, which is starting to flatten out. If this cannot garner as level support, this might not be a steady run into mainnet because it's in two days and we haven't really seen much increased volume at the moment. We're seeing some kind of gap periods where we're getting a lot of trading volume come in and then uh, little to no volume on the next few days. So, you know, Again, we're looking at BitFedEx here. It might be good to look and take a look at Binance as well to get a good reading on the volume. But yeah, a little bit of inconsistency. We're definitely seeing good trading circulation right now, but no serious buy side action outside of what we saw on the 24th. So we got we to get some momentum if this is going to be uh, you know a good run into mainnet at the moment. Going on to take a look at a few more players. Litecoin down below all three moving averages. This is looking like it's going to roll over quite soon, guys. Again, it's had a lot of time to hold here and see if we could get some buyers. This level has been holding for a very long time. You can see it right here at 16 million Satoshis. This has been holding for quite some time, and it just looks like it can't hold at this moment. As much as I, I don't have a despise for Litecoin in any sense, it looks like it has to roll over back down to a million Satoshis, as history has shown us in the past. So. Going on here to take a look at a few of the protocols, ADA, BTC, Cardano, looking very nice, been rallying very nice off of those lows after that engulfing candle. Again, this is a very bullish pattern, guys, in regards to candles when you can have a gain that closes above the losses of the previous day, especially if it was a dramatic drop, which it definitely was. It was a nice, decent drop, and we got a matching buy side, a sense of buy side action with upper levels of volume. You can see it's higher than it was the previous days on the sell side. So Cardano's rallying through. It's going to be a question as to whether or not it can clear through the 50 and 200 day. And this is going to be whether or not Bitcoin goes steadfast towards 8,000. If we start to see a correction over the next few hours, as we can see, Bitcoin is moving sideways generally at the moment. Uh, if Bitcoin can continue to move up, if we get another prop up, we could possibly see Cardano continue upwards towards the mid 3,000 range of Satoshi. So it'd be nice to see. Nice to see a little bit of recovery on one of the protocols. Same goes for Icon here, guys. Um, 
Icon, much like most protocols, is in the same boat. Again, the engulfing candle came back up, and we're starting to get some buy side volume outside uh, higher than the, what we got on the sell side. I think for Icon here, it's going to be a question of if it can get above 4,000 Satoshis, which the 21 day is curving down towards. It might serve as a level of resistance. We'll have to see if Bitcoin can continue. Again, the altcoins will follow in this space. Going on here to take a look at a few more players. One that I got to talk about, guys, um, is Knowles right here. I accidentally typed a V there. There we go. Knowles BTC. This has done exactly what we were hoping for. It's gone through the cup, it's gone through the handle, and now it's starting to break out. Now, to be fair, again, uh, you can obviously spot there's some market maker volume here. Now it's obviously come out, and it looks like at the moment, that with nulls at the moment, we're not getting any serious levels of volume, but the price action is definitely looking very nice. I think the key indicator we need here for this to actually have a serious breakout is some volume coming into it. At the moment, we just aren't seeing it, but I think it could possibly come in because you've got an absolute technical confirmation of a cup and handle. It stayed support and it maintained support around the exact level we were looking at, 45,000 Satoshis. So in this case, I think this is really, really healthy looking at the moment. We'll have to see if it can hold though. Going on here to take a look at a few more POA BTC. Uh, POA uh, obviously launched on Bitfinex, so we're going to have to get it on Binance here. POA has been doing very, very nicely, and I think this one is one of the cheaper protocols at the moment, especially seeing as it's a small cap. Came down to 4,500 sats from its peak, around uh, 10,000 sats, so more than a 50% discount. Still sitting at generally around a 50% discount on the highs. So definitely take a look at this one, guys, if you like POA. I know I did a video including in one of my top three coin videos, I think back in March or April. So again, really like POA. I've been keeping an eye on it for a while. So to share with you guys, as you all know, I like to keep transparent with you all from time to time as much as I can in this space. In regards to a trade that I did, I did a trade recently on Bitcoin. Uh, the reason why I did this is because more of the fact that uh, recently, it got a listing on Binance, which has attracted a big pool of liquidity into uh, Pol or sorry, not Polonix, into Bitcoin specifically. Reason being was is it was pretty much only regulated to Poloniex and hit BTC, I think. So because of that, it brought in a lot of pool of liquidity, and there's a big few sense of uh, there's a big sense of technical indicators that have gotten me eager on this one. First off, the bottom came in right at before where the Binance listing was, and it held there and got a rebound. And along with this as well, I think that if we take a look here on the hourly, we can see that there's a cupping and the price action again. We're taking a look at Poloniex here for the price action, but if you come to Binance, you can see that the volume is very sound at the moment. We're getting a nice amount of the currency traded. I got in around 900 sats in the moment, so I'm a little bit up. But if you take a look here, if we go back to Poloniex, I want to show you guys my different levels on how I'm executing the trade. I gotta, I swear I gotta do it right possibly. Let's see. Uh, there we go. All right, Poloniex, there we go. So generally, my trade is working like this. Uh, at the moment, I have uh, my stop loss at 87 sats at the moment, and then my different sell levels at 97 sats, 102 sats, 106 sats, and then also at 112 sats. So these are my general levels. Um, what I have right now is that at each level, it's going to be about 25% of my position. But the fact of the matter is, is that if this really continues to pick up momentum, I think we can see this go much higher than 112 sats. So I would definitely be willing to extend some of these levels past 100 sats, you know, after I get out some of my original position around the 50% lockup of my position, I would let the other uh, percentage just continue to run, and then I would move up my stop as I go. But at the moment, this is my general strategy. It's a 25 split uh, across four different sell levels, and we'll have to see how it does. I think it's got the momentum. The volume finally has come back in after obviously the announcement and it looks like it's going to be holding quite well seeing as it bounced off of the level when we got the news for the Binance listing. I like Bitcoin. It's a nice privacy coin, but more than anything, it's more of a trading opportunity for me in my opinion. So next up, I want to spend some time to talk about Unibright. Now, as many of you know, I've been working with the project over the past two months. We've got a lot of exciting things coming with the project, but at the moment, we were really, really excited to have the Unibright Hackathon. This is something we've been planning for a while in partnership with Microsoft Germany as well as Zolke. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's a, it's a German-based IT company, but basically, the event went really well. It was a two-day event where we had business partners, developers, CTOs and CEOs come from a wide variety of different companies to learn not only about Unibright itself, but also 
also learning how to actually utilize smart contracts to, to generate value. That's the issue right now is that smart contracts are, pre, uh, are preached generally as this amazing technology, but most people don't know how to implement them. Sometimes they're too difficult to implement. And then also people don't know really how to build value out of them at the moment. So with that, we not only showed obviously uh, the benefits of the Uniride platform, but along with that as well talked about how to utilize smart contracts, what they can be used for, and how to wide range of different speakers such as Martin, who's the lead on the project, as well as a lot of other individuals, both from the Unibright team and then also contributors who know about smart contracts and the more business development side of uh, blockchain technology. All in all, though, within the two-day event, guys, things went very, very well. Again, we had a lot of different businesses attend. You got a photo here of some of the Unibright team. But more than anything, I really love this quote here at the bottom where someone said that they had learned so much in two days to where they were confident enough to the belief that blockchain technology and smart contracts could be utilized in two years. So I'm really, really excited about this. I think there's a lot of good conviction that comes behind this in regards to the fact that people are starting to realize the technology. When you get your hands on it and when you really get past some of the roadblocks that are still in the way of smart contracts at the moment, you can see just how valuable they are. And along with that as well, we're hoping to build potential partners and clients in regards to Unibride itself. Again, we've been negotiating with a lot of different projects, trying to get as much connections as we can to get people to adopt the Unibride platform. So we've got some exciting news down the road, guys. So stay tuned. Outside of that, though, in regards to Oyster, Oyster finally launched Mainnet. Finally, we've been talking about Oyster ever since it was in its infancy. No one was talking about Oyster back in the day. It was an underrated project, and now they finally have Mainnet mainnet going live. So for those of you who don't know about Oyster, uh, Oyster is basically a way where individuals can generate revenue uh, using the Tangle framework from IOTA, as well as a, a sense of proof of work mechanism, where they're able to not only remove advertisements from their websites, but also generate income through using computational power in the background when people visit the website. And through that, you mine Oyster Pearls, and that can be utilized to purchase cloud storage on the Oyster protocol. So it's a really interesting thing. It almost knocks out, uh, I'd say, instead of two birds with one stone, three birds with one stone. It gets rid of clunky advertisements, it gives away for websites to earn, gener uh, earn and generate a consistent stream of revenue. And along with that as well, uh, provides a platform for decentralized cloud storage. So it's really, really interesting to try all three of those, and it's very easy to implement. So anyways, if for those of you out there who are more kind of technical and want to see it for yourself, you can actually go right now and test out the Oyster mainnet. They're actually, at the moment, you don't even need Oyster to get storage. They're actually going to provide a certain amount of free storage for you to go out and test on the Oyster mainnet as the mainnet has launched recently. It's gonna be, I think, only for a few days to a week. So definitely go try it out ASAP if you guys can. My brother had actually just tried it out recently. He said it works, he likes it so far. So it's really, really cool. You can store some files for free on the network, test it out for yourself, see if the technology is really sound. But again, I think this is really exciting. We've been keeping up with this project for a while. So it's good to see, yet again, much like other projects we've talked about on the channel, actually delivering on their tech. It took a while to get mainnet, but we got it. So it's very, very exciting. Let's hope that Oyster can continue to grow. So going on here, we've got to talk about this, guys. This is such a funny story. So there is a hacker that are a hacker or a set of hackers who have recently hacked into two well-known Canadian banks, stealing over I think ninety thousand consumers' information in regards to their bank account, and they are setting up a ransom for a million dollars to these banks in XRP out of all cryptocurrencies. So this might sound kind of scary at first, right? It might sound kind of worrying in regards to the fact that oh, they've stolen all this information. Yes, that's not good, obviously, but the fact fact of the matter is, is that they're asking for a million dollars in Ripple. So <laughs> definitely not the smartest currency of choice. You'd usually think it'd be something like Monero. But these uh, supposed Russian hackers, as you go through the article here, sent out an email quote where they were basically saying that there was an issue in regards to the half authenticated accounts in regards to the bank accounts. So there wasn't much standards in regards to authenticating uh, the access to user information, I guess, behind the scenes in regards to the database behind these banks. So. Again, as, as much as this is definitely something we should be concerned about, it shows that uh, centralized uh, storage to some degree can have some serious vulnerabilities if you don't have the protective measures uh, amongst to protect it. At the same time, I don't think they're going to be getting their million dollars of XRP. They probably should switch that and say, okay, we want a million dollars in Monero. But I don't know, maybe these don't seem to be the brightest hackers, or maybe it's a, it's a little bit of a joke. Anyways, continuing on here, thought that'd be good for some laughs. To laugh some more and really just see how ridiculous the ICO space is, and again, why I want to talk about it on the channel. 
is that uh, the founder of Beats, uh, Monster, who created the Beats brand uh, with Dr. Dre, has gone out and announcing that it is applying to the SEC for a security-run ICO, raising over $300 million. If you thought Telegram and a lot of the other players were crazy, Here's another player coming in, trying to raise $300 million. And they're going down the route that a lot of these, like Telegram, have, going through the securities route, going through more kind of accredited um, institutional investors. And the thing about this, guys, it just goes so crazy, is that they're not exactly focusing on working on audio or anything like that. They have a few different focus points. They want to build a blockchain uh, that's pretty much going to provide a wide range of different uh, services, marketing, accounting, auditing, payroll services, inventory control, and shipping management. So, I, I don't really, I don't see the need for this. I, I don't think you need three hundred million dollars to launch something like this. It seems to me like again what you're seeing in the traditional VC world: a quick urgency to not only just make money in the traditional VC world in Silicon Valley, but to make a crap ton of easy money in the ICO space because people are just tossing money at these projects. There's so much hype right now and no fundamentals, which is the crazy part about it. And it's almost depressing at some points. You gotta you gotta come to a rational sense as to what's really real and wants a bunch of hype and you could see it i think there was a you know a lot of people were curious about what happened with telegram for example what ended up happening with Telegram is they just decided they didn't cancel the ICO as many people mislabeled. They actually canceled the public sale. So all that money they raised, the $1.7 billion that they raised in private sales, they're keeping that. But they raised $1.7 billion. That's what some companies get valued at after they raise ten or $100 million. And that, that's crazy. That's usually, that was crazy in the traditional VC world. You would be the talk of the town if you raised that much money in any given round. And the fact that these ICOs are looking to just raise, oh yeah, we're just going to raise a few hundred million. I mean, it's just unfathomable, guys. Again, to, to tell you guys what I mean when I say that the ICO space is showing that we're just at the beginning of this is to really emphasize numbers like this. We are just at the beginning period. Institutional money is just getting in. And I can't tell you guys how crazy it's going to be for crypto when, uh, if we get a Bitcoin ETF and if we get more laxed regulation with ICOs. So very, very interesting stuff in regards to that. Going on here to the last piece of news, some positive news in regards to crypto. Bittrex, which has been talking about it for a while, has finally added USD pairings for the exchange. Now there's some good news and some bad news into this. The good news is that this is going to bring more liquidity, an entry point into crypto in regards to Bittrex, and it's definitely probably going to bring some volume to the exchange. The bad news is, is it's not available for us yet. It's not not available for the retail investors at the moment it's only corporate customers and I think there's a reason for this which I'll explain in just a second but basically over the long term they're hoping to bring it to retail consumers now the reason I think they're doing this is because if you're opening up a USD pairing we've seen this with USD tether at the moment excuse me, not USD Tether, true USD, uh, is that there's not enough liquidity at the moment. And what I think they're going to do is probably bring on commercial clients to get the markets liquid, kind of like market makers do in a sense, and make it so that you can easily exchange between US dollars and Bitcoin on these given exchanges. So I think that's the general case right now to have a nice liquid order book at the moment of buyers and sellers. So we'll have to see if that's the case. I hopefully, I would hope that they're going to bring this soon enough because we need to get more competition in regards to USD uh, to fiat, or excuse me, fiat to crypto exchanges. At the moment, there's just too little that really provide the opportunity to trade real U.S. dollars uh, with cryptocurrency. So I'd like to ask what you guys think about this. What do you all think in regards to Bitrix? Do you think they're going to make a comeback with all the gains that Binance has made over the past few months along with other exchanges? What do you think about the other news headlines that we talked about? Let me know down in the comments down below and get a discussion going, guys. That being said, that's it for the video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Stay tuned.